Good morning. Welcome to the Temiskaming Deanery Morning Prayer Service for May the 16th, 2021. This is the seventh Sunday of Easter. And today our reader will be the Reverend Dr. Peter Armstrong. Our preacher is going to be uh, Reverend Kate Scott. And our music is Mrs. Janet Parfit. And uh, your officiant today is myself, the Reverend Val Patterson. I will not leave you desolate, says the Lord. I will come to you. John 14, 18. Our first hymn this morning is Majesty. Majesty, worship is majesty. Thank you, Janet. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He gave us new life and hope by raising Jesus from the dead. Rejoice, then, even in your distress. We shall be counted worthy when Christ appears. God has claimed us as his own. He called us from our darkness into the light of his day. Alleluia, Christ is risen. 
The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia, the son of righteousness has risen indeed. Oh, come, let us worship. I invite you this morning to join with Christ our Passover. Alleluia, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia, Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Alleluia, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has all come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ, shall all be made alive. Alleluia. The first reading is taken from the book of Acts, and on the first chapter, beginning in verse 15. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers. Together, the crowd numbered about 120 persons and said, friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerning Judas became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken from us, one of these must be a witness to us to his resurrection. So they proposed two. Joseph called Barsabbas, who was also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship, from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias. He was added to the eleven apostles. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 1. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on his law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when, the, when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed. Giver of life, Save us from the desert of faithlessness and nourish us with the living water of your word that we may bring forth fruit that will last in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The second reading is taken from the first letter of John, the fifth chapter, beginning of verse nine. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God that he has testified to his son. Those who believe in the son of God have the testimony in their hearts. Those who do not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony that God has given concerning his son. And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life. And this life is in his son. Whoever is the son has life. Who does not have the son of God does not have life. 
I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second hymn this morning is Oceans. You call me out upon the waters, great unknown, with feet made pale. And there I find you in the mystery, the oceans deep, my faithful The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them. They have received them and know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. 
I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours and yours are mine. And I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them and not one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost so that scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you and I speak these things in the world so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself so that they also may be sanctified in truth. The gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The sermon today is on Acts 1, 1 to 11. Today is the seventh Sunday of Easter, and those of you who look at your church calendar will know that it is also Ascension Day and Jerusalem Sunday. So it is a mixed bag, so to speak, and we will deal briefly with Jerusalem Sunday and then Jesus' mission directive and then the ascension. Jerusalem Sunday is an opportunity for Anglicans in Canada to learn more about and support God's mission in the Diocese of Jerusalem. If you read the article in the Algoma Anglican, you would have seen that there is a group called the Companions of Jerusalem, which is a national voluntary body of members of the Anglican Church of Canada drawn together in a common concern and support for the well being of the church in the land of Christ's birth, death, and resurrection. Interested church members and others are encouraged to become a companion, either as individual parish or diocesan members. The Companions of Jerusalem will provide leadership and support to our church's growing partnership in the mission and justice with the Diocese of Jerusalem and enable a unified national response. The four main areas the Companions work centers on are education, advocacy, pilgrimage, and financial support to the Diocese of Jerusalem Ministries. If you're interested in becoming a member or in donating financially further to their mission, you can Google the Companions of Jerusalem. In 2011, I had the privilege of traveling to Israel on a guided tour with a number of really great people, most of whom were from this deanery. The last Sunday we were there, we all walked as a group to St. George's Cathedral in Jerusalem. And this picture is a picture of the inside or part of the inside of the cathedral. Several other tour groups had decided to attend as well. All of us unbeknownst to each other. And the place was standing room only. It was incredible to hear music sung by so many people in a number of different languages. The spirit hung heavy in the air that day and it felt like we were just being showered with joy. It just permeated the room. It was also incredible to learn 
that the church members had been praying for people to come and been praying for an answer to their budget problems. They have a number of missions they support and they were having difficulty meeting the needs. They were, to use an English word, gobsmacked. That after faithfully praying, several hundred people showed up that day. It was an amazing experience to feel that you were part of someone's answer to prayer, of someone's ability to further their mission work. Because as you can imagine, after feeling the emotion in the room and hearing about their challenges, we all donated all we could so that they could carry on. They were so encouraged and so grateful, and it was lovely to be able to worship and thank God together. Mission implies action. Even making a financial donation is taking action. The Oxford Dictionary defines mission as the vocation or calling of a religious organization, especially a Christian one, to go out into the world and spread its faith. Well, you have to do something in order to accomplish that. We are called by God to do apostolic action in the world. That call for action is found in the gospel reading today. And it's found in John 17, verse 18, where Jesus praying for his disciples just before he was arrested says, as you have sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. And he continues in verse 20 by praying, my prayer is not for them alone. In other words, he was referring to us as well as being sent into the world. He also gave that same message in the Great Commission that he gave to the disciples, not just the disciples, but also to us. In Matthew 28, verses 16 to 20, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me and therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Three different times there is that call to action. As we know, we can talk about our faith, but to the people on the receiving end, actions often speak louder than words. I think here we should note the importance Jesus gave to this action, this call to mission. It was the last one of the final three sentences he spoke to the disciples before they never saw him again in human form on this earth. People tend to freak a little, you know, when you use the word mission. They either feel you have to give everything up and go overseas, or they conjure up a vision of revival tents and people fainting. It includes those things sometimes, but that's not all it's about. Not all Jesus was talking about when he gave that directive. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Mission doesn't have to be scary. With Christ at our side, we can be a force for action, a force for change. It doesn't have to be a global project, although it could be. You can do mission as an individual, a group, or a congregation. Just look around your community, and when you see a need, meet it. That's mission. An example I can give you, many of you have probably heard that I and my fellow parishioners set up the Grace Mission, which is funded by people in the congregation. This provides us with the ability to send people home on a bus when they are released from jail in our area and have no other way to get there. Such a simple thing. But I have seen numbers of people in tears 
because they could not believe that people they had not even met could care so much. Many of them ask me how they can send money back to the church. I tell them, we just ask you to pay it forward and help someone else when you can. Imagine how many more people have been helped by that ripple effect of people paying it forward. And I have no doubt that they do because they are so moved by the church's generosity. We are sent out to serve the world in Christ's name. Just look for a need in your community and pray for a way to meet it. Finding a way to meet that need is, in a nutshell, mission. Why do we do it? Not only because Jesus commands it, but because Jesus helps us to envision a world where there is no war or injustice. To believe in a world where people don't go hungry and where children can grow up happy and healthy, untainted by abuse or poverty or disease. A world where people truly love their neighbors as themselves. We can do that. With Jesus by our side, we can believe in and make happen a world transformed by Christ through people who choose to be his hands and his feet, who choose to be members of the Christian community, who are willing to step out in action with courage and with vision and with faith. We can be a part of those who are willing and able to take their place in the mission of the church, empowered by the love of Christ and choosing to be a part of the transformation of the world in which we live. Now, there are some steps that will assist you in your mission being more likely to succeed. The first one is to identify the problem and understand the situation. The second one, identify who can help solve the challenge and how. The third one, make a plan for action. And lastly, pray. Pray a lot for the assistance and empowering of the Holy Spirit. Everything, everything succeeds better with prayer and the assistance of the Spirit. Now, after Jesus finished speaking to the disciples and directing them to go out among the people, he ascended, or as it says in my Bible translation, he was taken up before their very eyes and a cloud hid him from their sight. Again, we can probably use that very apt English word gobsmacked. I expect the disciples were probably gobsmacked by what was happening and very unsure of what to make of it all. They were looking for the kingdom of Israel to be restored. And that is what they ask him. Lord, at this time, are you going to restore the kingdom to Israel? Now that Jesus had been resurrected, they must have wondered if that was the plan, if that was possible. They were, of course, looking at an earthly kingdom. They hadn't quite yet grasped that through his death and resurrection, Jesus had already been exalted as Israel's representative. He directs the disciples to go out on a mission, but they are also going out as heralds, not of one who would someday be king, but of the one who had already been enthroned as the king over all of the earth. So we live in the time of not yet, the time when the kingdom of God is being heralded as having arrived with Jesus as its king, as it indeed has. And yet, as N.T. Wright tells us, in another sense, it is yet to happen because we still await the time when the whole world is visibly and clearly living under God's just 
and healing rule. Regardless of where we are in this continuum, we know what our mission is right here and right now to be witnesses for Christ from here until the ends of the earth. And we await with great anticipation the earthly return of the King. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks as your people gather to be the church in this place and time. Help us listen for the leading of the spirit. Open our hearts and minds so we can learn how best to be followers of Jesus in 2021 and beyond. Inspire us to act with insight and compassion in these challenging times. Teach us how to seize the opportunities you have set before us with courage and wisdom. Keep us mindful that all we do is through our Lord Jesus Christ and is done for your glory. Amen. We'll join together to say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In joy and in hope, let us pray to the source of all life, God himself, saying, hear us, Lord of glory. Particularly in this Easter season, grant that our risen Savior may fill us with the joy of his holy and life-giving resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. We pray for the universal church around the world. We pray for the those churches which are undergoing um, persecution or difficulties at this time. We pray that the good news may be faithfully proclaimed, the sacraments duly administered. We pray that the church may be passionate about the mission that we're called to carry out. Grant, O oh Lord, that isolated and persecuted churches may find fresh strength in the Easter gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. Almighty God, help us to be sensitive to ourselves and how we present ourselves to one another. Uh, we pray that you will give, grant us humility to be subject to one another in Christian love. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. Almighty God, we pray for the nations of the earth, for places where there's violence or unrest, remembering particularly the Diocese of Jerusalem, Israel and Palestine. We pray also for those nations who struggle to provide and care for their population during the current pandemic. Mighty God, we pray that by the power of your Holy Spirit, wars and famine may cease throughout all the earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. That you may reveal the light of your presence to the sick especially those known to us at this time, for the weak, the dying, for those who are in any kind of prison, that may be comforted and strengthened. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. 
Almighty God, grant that you may send the fire of the Holy Spirit upon your people, that we may bear faithful witness to your Son's glorious resurrection and ascension. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. Our call at court today for Ascension Day. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, ascended to the throne of heaven that he might rule over all things as Lord. Keep the church in the unity of the spirit and in the bond of his peace and bring the whole of creation to worship at his feet, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. And our collect for this day. Almighty God, You have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Mercifully, give us faith to know that, as he promised, he abides with us on earth to the end of time. Who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our prayer for guidance. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. Guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but we remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, as our Savior has taught us, we are bold to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, equip you with everything good, that you may do his will, working you that which is pleasing in his sight. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be upon you this day and forevermore. Amen. Our final hymn today is Alleluia, Sing to Jesus.
go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.